Okay, in the last video, uh, we talked a lot about the unit circle, and uh, we talked about how to fill it in, and a bunch of tips and tricks for remembering where everything goes, where all the angles go, where all the points go, uh, things like that. So that was in the last video. Uh, now that we've done that, what we want to do is talk about how the unit circle relates to trig, um, and the trig functions and things like that. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So let's say uh, we have a point right here on the unit circle. Okay, so let's just uh, pretend this is a unit circle. So it could be a little bit better, but uh, not terrible, I guess. Uh, this is the point x, comma, y. Just, so just some points anywhere on the unit circle here. Um, and then let's say we have an angle theta uh, that's in standard position. So vertex at the origin, initial side on the positive x-axis. So here's our angle theta. OK. So first, just a quick definition. Um, if we have this angle theta whose terminal side goes through this point x comma y, then what we say is theta is associated with the point x comma y. So theta is uh, associated with, that's what we say, theta is associated with Okay, so that's just a quick definition there. So if we have an angle um, in standard position and the terminal side goes through a point x comma y, then what we say is this angle theta is associated with x comma y. Okay? And we'll do a couple examples later on in the video uh, that use this definition here. So anyway, um, what if we want to figure out uh, what is cosine of theta and uh, what is sine of theta? Okay? What if we want to figure these things out? Okay. Well, um, we only talked about cosine and sine and uh, things like that in terms of right triangles, right? So we don't really have a right triangle here, but let's go ahead and toss one in here. Okay, so, that's, uh, so all we have is an angle and a point on the unit circle, and uh, this angle is associated with that point. Uh, and we just want to know what's the cosine and sine of that angle. And also the other trig functions too, but we'll talk about those uh, after these. So let's zoom in here. Okay, now since all we know, uh, the only thing we really know about is uh, right triangles as far as trig functions go, Let's toss a right triangle in here. So what we do is we start at this point x comma y, drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis. So that's going to be a right angle. Okay. Now um, forget about the circle and uh, this ray and everything. So just look at this right triangle part. So here's a right triangle. Here's a leg, leg, hypotenuse. Okay. So if we just look at the right triangle, what's the cosine of theta? Cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. What's the sine of theta? The opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Yeah, so let's go ahead and figure out what these things are. Well, um, first of all, this is the point 0, 0. This is the point x comma y. That means that this uh, side here has to be x units. Okay? And this side here has to be y units. Okay? Uh, why is that? Because if you start at 0, 0 and you want to go to the point x comma y up here, you have to go over x units and up y units. Okay? Go over x units and then go up y units. So that'll bring you to the point x comma y. So therefore, this length here has to be x, because we have to go over that far. And then we have to go up y units to get to x comma y. So that's why this length is y. Okay. So um, how about the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse, notice uh, this here is 0, 0, the center of the circle. This here is a point on the circle. Okay. So the distance between them is the radius of the circle. Since it's a unit circle, the radius is just 1. Okay, so just to recap again real quick, uh, here's the center of the circle, here's a point on the circle, the distance between them, just by definition of a circle, is the radius of the circle, okay? And since it's a unit circle, then the radius is 1, okay? So now we have uh, the adjacent side, the opposite side, and the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is x divided by 1, which is just x, okay? Um, and the sine of theta is the opposite side uh, divided by the hypotenuse, which is y divided by 1, which is just y. Okay? So cosine of theta is x, sine of theta is y. Uh, now, notice uh, this is really great now because this is going to help us define these trig functions for, uh, this is going to help us do more basically. It's going to help us define trig functions for angles that are larger than, you know, acute angles, right? So when we deal with trig and right triangles, we're kind of limited because this angle theta has to be between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, right? Um, so it has to be larger than, zero and, uh, larger than 0 degrees and smaller than 90 degrees. So basically theta has to be acute. But now that we have the unit circle, um, 
we can define trig functions for pretty much any theta, really, just any theta. Uh, and what's nice is this here, so what do we see here? Um, if theta is an angle associated with a point on the unit circle, then the cosine of theta is the x-coordinate, and the sine of theta is the y-coordinate. Okay, so we drew this point x, comma, y in the first quadrant, uh, but this is actually true. Um, this definition here can be extended to pretty much uh, cover the entire unit circle. So basically, um, if we have any angle theta, even if it puts us over here or down here or down here, um, this is still going to be true. Okay, it's uh, pretty much how we're just going to define it now. So if we have a point x, comma, y on the unit circle, then uh, if theta is associated with that point, then cosine of theta is the x-coordinate, sine of theta is the y-coordinate. Okay. Um, what about the other four trig functions? That's still, everything still line up okay. Well, what's the tangent of theta? Okay. Well, the tangent of theta, let's look at um, the right triangle here. So the tangent of theta is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so y over x. So tangent of theta is y divided by x. Well, notice that's uh, the sine of theta Okay, that's the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And remember, that was one of the uh, quotient identities, and that's good. You know, uh, that's great that that still holds. Uh, we should certainly hope so, right? So whether we're talking about right triangle trig or unit circle trig, um, which is more general, then this uh, quotient, identi uh, quotient identity still holds, which is really great. That's what we need, that's what we want, that's what we hope for. Um, so that's happening there. Okay, so again, uh, it's the same thing as Tangent of theta is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, y over x. But y is the sine of theta, x is the cosine of theta. So y over x is just sine of theta over cosine of theta. Okay. And the um, other three trig functions are still going to be the same also. So what we see then is that this really does coincide with right triangle trig. And that's kind of the point we want to make here. So uh, cosine of theta, the corresponding one is secant of theta. So remember, secant of theta is the uh, hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So remember that definition from right triangle trig, hypotenuse divided by adjacent. So secant of theta is 1 over x, okay? hypotenuse divided by adjacent, 1 over x, but that is uh, 1 over cosine of theta, okay? 1 over cosine of theta. Okay, that is the secant of theta, that's great. What about the cosecant of theta? Okay, let's uh, separate these so they don't run together. Cosecant of theta, whoops, remember uh, from right triangles, the definition of the cosecant was uh, the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side, which for this right triangle is 1 divided by y. So the cosecant of theta is 1 divided by y, but y is the sine of theta, so this uh, reciprocal identity still holds. Okay. Cosecant of theta is still 1 over sine of theta. Um, how about the cotangent of theta? Well, cotangent of theta, remember that was, uh, for right triangles, that's adjacent divided by uh, opposite. So the cotangent of theta is x divided by y for this particular right triangle. So this is x over y. Okay? And that's the same thing as, uh, well, x is the cosine of theta. Okay? x is the cosine of theta, and y is the sine of theta. So this really is cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. And notice that that is the reciprocal, okay, that is the reciprocal of the uh, tangent function here. Okay, so cotangent of theta is 1 over the tangent function. So this really does equal uh, 1 over tangent theta. Okay. So uh, the point here is that even though we're not really talking about right triangles anymore, we're being more general now, um, or we're going to allow ourselves to be more general here, uh, everything still holds true. Okay, the secant is... Uh, if we talk about it in terms of right triangles, we have hypotenuse divided by adjacent, but notice that uh, this reciprocal identity still holds. Same thing with the cosecant, reciprocal identity still holds. And with the cotangent, uh, the quotient identity and the reciprocal identity still hold. Okay, so that's great. So now, um, again, this lets us define trig functions for any angle, not just angles in a right triangle. So what we can do, let's zoom out a little bit here. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down that result here. Um, if if uh, x comma y is any point is any point on the unit circle and if theta is associated with associated with x comma y uh, then then what we have is uh, 
cosine theta equals x and sine of theta equals y. Okay, so in other words, um, cosine of theta is the x-coordinate and sine of theta is the y-coordinate. So this is really huge right here, okay? This is very important. We're going to use this concept in a lot of uh, later videos. So if x comma y is any point on the unit circle, okay, um, that's really any point at all. Not just one of these special points, right? So like root 3 over 2 comma 1 half, root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So not just any of these special common points here, but any point at all. So this is just a circle, so it has infinitely many points, right? So there's like another point up here that maybe has goofy coordinates uh, and so on and so forth. Another point down here. Uh, one somewhere in between here that's, you know, it's just got infinitely many points. Um, some may have really strange goofy coordinates, but it doesn't really matter. All that matters is uh, if x comma y is any point, okay, any point uh, on the unit circle, and if theta is associated with the point x comma y, then the cosine of theta uh, is the x coordinate and the sine of theta is the y coordinate. Okay, that's very, very important here. Um, also, what's important is that this is only true if x comma y is on the unit circle. Okay. So if we have a point x comma y, let's say like up here that's off the unit circle, then uh, we have to do, then these aren't really going to hold, we'll have to do something else. But we will talk about that in a later video. But for now, don't worry about that. Uh, we will talk about that later though. And it might sound kind of complicated or confusing, but it's really not that bad um, because you can approach it a certain way so that it doesn't actually matter. But when we build all this up, when we talk about it for the first time, we do want to see this um, from you know, as many angles as we can so that we thoroughly understand it. Uh, okay, so again, if x comma y is any point on the unit circle and if theta is uh, an angle associated with x comma y, then cosine of that angle is the x coordinate and sine of theta, sine of that angle is the y coordinate. And um, the other four trig functions follow from the quotient identities and the reciprocal identities. Okay, so just know that uh, those identities still hold true. Okay. Okay, so let's do a couple quick examples with that. Um, so we'll, let's zoom out a bit and let's uh, get rid of the, all this stuff here and we'll do a quick example. Two quick examples, I guess. So actually maybe I do want to keep this here. Uh, if x comma y, any point on the new circle. Okay, so let's say um, example one, example one with this stuff. Uh, let's see. If theta is uh, associated with associated with the point, um, which point? Let's say negative one half, comma root three over two. Um, find the following. Okay, so if theta is an angle associated with the point negative one half comma root three over two, then what we want to do is find uh, cosine of theta, basically all six trig functions, sine of theta, uh, tangent of theta, um, secant of theta, cosecant of theta, and uh, cotangent of theta. Okay, so negative one half comma root three over two. Uh, notice that's one of the special points on the unit circle, right? Negative one half uh, comma root three over two is this point right here. So the, actually, we do know what this angle theta is. Okay, this angle theta is uh, two pi over three. But that doesn't actually matter. We don't need to know that. All we need to know is that this point is on the unit circle. Okay. So actually, before we approach a problem like this, we need to make sure that this point is on the unit circle. How do we tell if a point's on the unit circle? Well, remember, um, on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, right? So what we have to do is make sure that the coordinates of this point uh, actually satisfy that definition here, or satisfy this equation. Um, so the x is negative 1 half, okay, square that. Um, the y is root 3 over 2, square that. And then we have to make sure that that equals 1. Okay, again, why are we doing this? Because we have to make sure that this point is on the unit circle. Because if it is on the unit circle, then we can apply this uh, definition here that we just made. Okay, We can apply this here. But if this point is not on the unit circle, we have to do something else. Um, and we haven't talked about what to do yet, so we're only going to pick points on the unit circle. But I just want to kind of get you in the habit of making sure that you know to check is this on the unit circle or not, uh, if you want to just directly apply this. Okay. 
Um, all right, so anyway, negative one half, if we square that, uh, what are we going to get? So we're going to get positive one fourth. Okay, because that's negative one half times negative one half, so one over two times two is one over four. Uh, root three over two squared, so that's root three times root three on top, which is three. On the bottom, we have two times two, which is four. Okay, so one fourth plus three fourths is four over four, which is just one. Okay, so uh, yeah, luckily, negative one half comma root three over two, um, we know that's on the unit circle. And again, we know it was a special point on the unit circle, so we didn't really have to do this. But I just want to point out that you really should be careful, because if you're going to do this directly, um, just make sure that you know this is a point on the unit circle, and this is how you check. Okay, plug in the x-coordinate, plug in the y-coordinate, uh, plug them both into this equation, and make sure that you do get 1. Okay, so anyway, um, now what's the cosine of theta? Well, it really is this simple. So this is a point on the unit circle. Okay, so what we found out earlier was if uh, we have a point on the unit circle, and if theta is associated with that point, then cosine of theta is the x-coordinate. Sine of theta is the y-coordinate. Okay, so what's the cosine of theta? It's the x-coordinate, negative one-half. What's the sine of theta? It's the y-coordinate, root three over two. Okay. Uh, it really is that simple. What's the tangent of theta? Well, it's the sine divided by the cosine. Okay. So let's come down here and work that out. So tangent of theta is uh, the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So it's root three over two uh, divided by the cosine of theta. Okay, so let's uh, zoom in on that. Okay, so the tangent of theta is the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So root three over two divided by negative one half. So this is root three over two times, if you divide by negative one half, that's like multiplying by negative two. Okay. So the twos cancel, we still have a minus sign though, uh, so what we really have is negative root three. Okay, so tangent of theta is negative root three. Okay, so again, just take sine of theta divided by cosine of theta and then simplify, and then you just get negative square root of three. Okay, um, how about the secant of theta? Well, the secant of theta, remember that's just the reciprocal of the cosine. So if the cosine is negative one half, then the reciprocal is negative two. How about the cosecant of theta? Well, if, uh, remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if the sine of theta is root 3 over 2, then the cosecant of theta is 2 over root 3. Okay? Or if you want to rationalize the denominator, uh, multiply the top and the bottom by root 3 over root 3. Okay, so then uh, you end up with 2 root 3 over 3. Okay, so if you want to rationalize the denominator, you get that but I don't really believe that that's more simplified than this, but anyway, try to hold off on that. Um, and the cotangent of theta is gonna be the, so a couple different ways to think about it. It's, you could do cosine divided by sine, which would be a little more work than necessary, because you can also say, oh, okay, cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. Okay, the tangent is negative square root of three, so the cotangent is negative one over the square root of three, okay? Or again, if you want to rationalize the denominator, multiply the top and the bottom by root three, so then you get uh, negative root 3 over 3, okay? Because um, negative 1 over, uh, over root 3 times root 3 over root 3 equals negative root 3 on top, and then your root 3 times root 3 is just 3, so that's what you end up with there, okay? So anyway, um, zoom back out a little bit. That's example 1. We'll do one more quick example um, with a different point. So actually, um, what do we see here? Remember, we talked about theta uh, this negative one half comma root three over two, that is the special point right here that corresponds to theta equals two pi over three. So actually what we just found out was cosine of two pi over three is negative one half. Sine of two pi over three is root three over two and so on and so forth. So we just evaluated some trig functions um, at an angle theta that's uh, larger than 90 degrees. Okay, that's uh, larger than an acute angle. So that's good. Um, okay, so and again, just got to keep this in mind here. If x comma y is any point on the unit circle, and if theta is associated with that point, then cosine of theta is x and sine of theta is y. Okay. So let's do uh, example two real quick. Um, it's pretty much going to be the same thing, but we're going to have a different point now. Uh, and it's not going to be one of the nice special points or the common points. So example two is going to be uh, negative two thirds. Um, Let's say this, let's say positive two-thirds, sorry, positive two-thirds, and uh, negative root five over three. Okay, so uh, th uh, this is example two now. So if theta is associated with the point uh, two-thirds, comma, negative root five over three, then let's find all the same things. Cosine of theta, 
sine of theta, tangent of theta, and so on and so forth. So we're going to do it uh, literally exactly the same way. The only thing that's different, uh, the only thing that's different is the numbers. Okay, so the math is going to be identical, what we just did. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that this point is on the unit circle. Okay, so this point, this is not one of the special points, right? Two thirds comma negative root five over three. Uh, that is not one of the special points on the unit circle. Okay, so positive x, negative y, that would be somewhere down here. But that's not one of the special points, right? So we have to make sure it's on the unit circle for sure this time. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And again, how do we do that? Uh, we take the x and y coordinates and plug them into this equation. So x squared, that's uh, 2 thirds squared. y squared, that's going to be uh, negative root 5 over 3 squared. Okay, and what does that equal? Well, that equals, uh, well, 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 4 over 9. Okay. What about here? So the negative, when we square a negative, it just becomes positive, so that's good. Root 5 squared is just 5. And then if we square 3, we get 9. Okay, so this is 4 over 9 plus 5 over 9, which is 9 over 9, which is 1. That is great, uh, because what that tells us is that since x squared plus y squared equals 1, then hey, this point is on the unit circle. This point is actually on the unit circle. Okay, it's some strange goofy point somewhere down here, not one of the special points, but still, it's on the unit circle, so we can apply this rule here, this definition really. So if x comma y is any point on the unit circle, even this goofy point right here, um, and if theta is associated with this uh, point x comma y, then cosine of theta is the x coordinate, sine of theta is the y coordinate. So since this point is on the unit circle, cosine of theta is the x coordinate, two thirds, and sine of theta is the y coordinate, uh, negative root five over three. Okay, it really is that simple, um, as long as you're dealing with a point on the unit circle. And again, if uh, the point is not on the unit circle, we'll talk about that in a later video. So, uh, how about the tangent? So the tangent, remember, is just sine divided by cosine. So tangent of theta is, uh, let's zoom in on this. It's going to be sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And uh, the sine of theta is negative root 5 over 3. And the cosine of theta is uh, 2 over 3. Okay, so we're doing this operation here. So uh, negative root 5 over 3. Now, if you divide by two thirds, you're really like multiplying by three halves, right? So then the threes cancel and you have negative root five uh, over two. Okay, so that's what the tangent of theta is. So again, sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, just uh, simplify and you get negative root five over two. So tangent of theta is negative root five over two. Okay, um, how about the secant of theta? <clears throat> well, remember the secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine of theta. So if cosine of theta is 2 thirds, then the reciprocal is 3 halves. That's what the secant is. Cosecant of theta uh, is the reciprocal of the sine of theta. So if the sine of theta is negative root 5 over 3, then this is going to be uh, negative 3 over root 5. Or if you insist on rationalizing the denominator, it's negative 3 root 5 over 5. Okay, so again, multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 5, and then this is what you'll get. Um, but I don't believe that that's more simplified than this. Okay. There's really nothing wrong with having a root in the denominator. Uh, cotangent of theta, uh, so you can think of that as cosine of theta divided by sine of theta, or more simply, uh, in this case, take the reciprocal of the tangent. So if the tangent of theta is negative square root of five over two, then the cotangent would be the reciprocal of that, which would be uh, negative two divided by the square root of five. Okay. Or uh, if you want to rationalize the denominator, or if you have to, it's negative two root of five over 5. Okay. So that's really pretty much it. You know, it really is that simple. So we are dealing with um, a pretty different thing here, but it's almost, you know, almost even simpler uh, in a way, because uh, since we're talking about points on the unit circle, we can kind of forget about right triangles um, and just say, okay, since this point is on the unit circle, then the cosine of the angle associated with it is the x-coordinate. The sine of that angle is the y-coordinate. And then tangent is sine over cosine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, still. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, still. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, still. Okay, just like with right triangles. So we do have that nice thing going on. Okay, so that's um, how the unit circle relates to trig and right triangles and things like that. So again, just remember, if x comma y is any point on the unit circle, and if theta is associated with x comma y, then cosine of theta is the x-coordinate, 
and sine of theta is the y coordinate. And remember, associated with means the uh, terminal side of theta goes through the point x comma y. Okay, so we'll do uh, a lot more examples um, in a bunch of different settings in the next few videos, and uh, much more, uh, many more definitions coming up also. So that's how the unit circle relates to trig.